So first of all, uh, thank you for CCMA for inviting me and a uh, warm uh, uh, regards from India. I come uh, from the southern part of India, from Kochi, uh, Kerala. And uh, the topic that uh, I selected was Ambition Beyond Size Based Guidelines. So uh, what we know, as uh, uh, our professor already uh, elaborated, is that CC is the sixth most common cancer, is the third leading cause of cancer-related death. Uh, we are going to concentrate it on uh, lesions, let's say, go to three centimeter size and small HCCs. And what we know about uh, these HCCs is that uh, the treatment options include uh, resection, liver transplantation, local regional therapy. And uh, coming to local regional therapy, we also know that RFA, uh, the log results are comparable with uh, hepatectomy and, uh, and according to uh, multiple case reports. Uh, what we know is that uh, RFA is also lower complication stay, uh, complication rates, and uh, shorter hospital stay. But uh, at present, uh, the uh, most widely used guidelines, they uh, divide these patients or uh, they prognosticate and they uh, tell us uh, uh, how to proceed uh, with uh, the lesions and the patients based on the size, the number of uh, the lesions, and uh, based on the liver function and the performance score. And uh, uh, what we uh, do know is that uh, even uh, in case of small HCCs, there is uh, lesions less than equal to three centimeters in size, they are not homogeneous population, and but uh, unfortunately, uh, till now, uh, uh, due to uh, the uh, evidence uh, uh, lacking of the evidence, uh, these uh, heterogeneity of the HCCs has still not come into the guidelines. And uh, but we, what we do know is that uh, 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 small HCCs less than or equal to three centimeters, they are also a heterogeneous population, as much as 18 to 40 percent of uh, small HCCs. There is lesions less than or equal to three centimeters in size they have a micro uh, vascular invasion and they behave as locally advanced lesions. And there are multiple uh, studies regarding that. So uh, what we, uh, 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 after, uh, uh, for the last two years, what we have done is that we have tailored our uh, treatment modality based on uh, certain factors that uh, help us understand and help us divide these HCCs into uh, various grades and uh, we follow a tailor-made uh, approach for these HCCs, not just based on the size criteria. And uh, uh, one of the, um, the factors that help us uh, uh, help us uh, regarding uh, uh, the differentiation of these lesions uh, into uh, uh, the various grades of the lesions uh, are one is morphology, and there are a lot of studies. Uh, that uh, uh, state that uh, HCC with single node lab morphology have a more favorable outcome compared with those with multi node lab or infiltrative growth patterns. And to go more in detail, I'll just uh, uh, show a study, a uh, quota study uh, published in 2018, where the authors it retrospectively analyzed uh, 242 cases uh, of consecutively resected uh, solitary primary HCC between 2003 and 2012. And here, what they uh, uh, what uh, what they study was clinical pathological and prognostic sig uh, significance of the cross classification of hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, in these, uh, what uh, HCCs actually uh, they are divided uh, based on the Korea and Japanese classification to five types. Uh, one is the vague nodular type. Second is the expanding nodular type. The type three is the uh, multi nodular confluent type. Type 4 is a uh, nodular type with very nodular extension, and type 5 is a uh, infiltrative HCCs. So all these uh, information is there. There are studies that have validated this, yeah, but still these have not come into the guidelines as of now. And uh, the others in this study, actually, uh, uh, what uh, they also study the immunohistochemical staining of uh, the gross tumor types based on the stemless related factors, markers, the epithelial cellulization molecule and uh, epithelial missing and transition related markers and ezrin. And what they found was that uh, the most common type of HCC in their group uh, was uh, as uh, uh, it was the expanding nodular type. That is the most common uh, in 44.2%. And uh, the second most common was the nodular, uh, was a multinodal component type of the lesions. And yes. So uh, based on uh, their uh, research, what they uh, found was that uh, the infiltrative node, infiltrative lesion, that is a type 5, 
uh, lesions were significantly associated, uh, uh, had a more uh, larger tumor size. They had high incidence of microvascular invasion. They had high incidence of port vein invasion. And they had higher T category, uh, according to DNM classification. And also they found that uh, the uh, immunohistochemical markers, that is CK9 positive, uh, EPCAM, uh, UPR, and ESRIN positivity was much higher in the infiltrative lesions compared to the other types. And what they also found was that uh, the, uh, the, uh, 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 the vaguely nodular types and the expanding nodular type lesions, they had significantly less uh, tumor size. And the incidence of protein invasion, microvas invasion, and higher T category was much less in these lesions. Whereas the multinodular confident type and the nodular with pitnodular uh, ex uh, uh, extension type lesions had, a, uh, had, uh, uh, had in between uh, uh, findings. So, uh, and uh, uh, when we come to the uh, disease-free survival, uh, the authors actually, uh, what uh, they found is that there's a significant difference in the disease-free survival between the five types, with the infiltrating type uh, having the worst uh, uh, disease-free survival and the expanding nodular type having the best, along with uh, the vaguely nodular type. So, uh, and uh, they actually, uh, it's sometimes it's very difficult to accurately uh, distinguish lesion between uh, uh, all the five types. So what they did is they combined uh, the vaguely nodal and expanding nodal types into type one, and the other types is type two. And there was a significant difference uh, in the overall uh, disease, uh, in the disease phase survival between the two groups. And uh, overall survival actually was also significantly different between the two groups. And uh, what uh, they also found was that uh, there was a higher incidence in type 2 SCC of the immunophenotypes associated with SEMNES, uh, say as uh, CK19, FKM, CD133, and CK positivity. And these uh, actually had, uh, uh, these were associated with higher serum AFP levels, less frequent fibrous capsule formation, intertubular fibrous trauma, and uh, uh, they had uh, much more frequent vascular invasion and poor prognosis compared to typical SCCs. And these uh, findings are also validated by other studies. And uh, what we also know is that, uh, what, uh, what the others also found is that there was also higher incidence in type 2 HCC of the epithelial uh, mesenchymal transformation factors. And uh, with the expression of these factors, actually what that causes is uh, that uh, the epithelial cells lose their epithelial characteristics and acquire mesenchymal features for stating tumor invasion and distant metastasis. And uh, based on uh, the various studies, actually, what uh, we know is that invasiveness and metastatic ability of HCCs could be reflected by the gross appearance. So uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the significance of gross tumor morphology on the, uh, uh, as a prognostic factor has also been uh, validated uh, in small HCCs uh, uh, that is less than or equal to 3 centimeter. And also for huge SCCs, there is more than 10 centimeter. So, and imaging morphology, uh, uh, um, uh, the gross tumor morphology uh, can be ascertained or can be uh, identified using uh, the modern imaging uh, techniques that are available now. And uh, there are studies actually which uh, uh, compare the gross classification, uh, 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 compare the imaging preoperative imaging criteria as a prognostic indicator after both radio frequency ablation and taste. And this is one study actually uh, that uh, uh, was, uh, that uh, tried to identify the, uh, 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 the uh, significance of uh, the gross uh, 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 preoperative imaging findings as a prognostic significance after radio frequency ablation. In this study, uh, the authors actually studied a total of 316 patients and the diagnosis of HCC was based on ESL criteria. And all these lesions uh, involved in the study uh, uh, who were evaluated had a pathological confirmed SCC. And the diameter in this study was less than or equal to five centimeters. And uh, the others actually divided the lesions into three types. The first one was overall round lesion with uh, a, a well-defined brain. Type two uh, lesion was either a lesion, uh, nodular lesion with uh, a nodular projection in any of the, image, any of the, uh, 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 of the, CT or MRI phase, or a multinodal confident type lesion. And type 3 lesion uh, was the uh, lesion that we typically identify as inferior lesions, where the lesions have, uh, uh, they may be a regular well, uh, lesion with well-defined rim or a 
uh, uh, very uh, hazy and ill-defined margins. So, uh, and the uh, authors actually also uh, studied the significance of enhancement pattern as a prognostic indicator. They divide the lesions based on remarkably enhancing lesions, that is lesions that showed uh, uh, enhancement more than 30 Hounsfield units, and uh, lesions uh, that is uh, showed uh, moderately, slightly enhancing, that is uh, in which the increase in enhancement was less than or equal to 30 Hounsfield units. And uh, they, what they found was that the type 3 lesions had significantly higher AFP level and enhancement degree compared to type 1 and type 2. And uh, this, is a, uh, uh, this is the overall survival rate in their cohort. Uh, the one, three and five year survival rates were 97%, 76%, and 59.7% respectively, comparable to other published literature. But when they divided uh, and uh, the lesions based on their uh, uh, CT morphological types into type 1, type 2, and type 3, they found that the overall survival of the lesions uh, of, uh, of these patients uh, were significantly different uh, compa uh, by, uh, uh, in, uh, between the three types of HCCs with the type 1 HCCs having the best uh, survival and type 3 HCCs having the worst survival. And actually, uh, there is significant difference in the overall survival rate between type 1 versus type 2, type 1 versus type 3, and even between type 2 and type 3, indicating that the uh, infiltrated type of HCCs had the worst prognosis. And uh, coming to the enhancement pattern, what the others found was that based on the enhancement pattern also, the lesions that showed uh, remarkable enhancement, that is enhancement more than 30 Hounsfield units, these lesions had a uh, significantly better overall survival rate compared to uh, lesions that were uh, moderately slightly enhancing. And the incidence of moderately slightly enhancing lesions was higher among type 3 lesions. Uh, uh, by their, uh, by, uh, on univariate analysis, what they found was that gross classification based on the preoperative imaging, AFP level, tumor size, enhancement degree were significant uh, prognostic indicators. But on multivariate analysis, what they found was that uh, gross classification, that is uh, based on the preoperative imaging, was the only significant uh, prognostic indicator uh, on the overall and disease free survival in these patients. The three-year recurrence rates uh, were also uh, uh, significantly different in the three times. And uh, the overall uh, recurrence rate was 64.1%. And you can see when they divide into uh, the three times, the highest uh, recurrence rate was uh, in type 3 lesion, that is 80%. And uh, they also had the type 3 lesion also had the highest local recurrence rate of 15%, whereas it was just 3% at the end of three years in the type 1 group. In conclusion, what they said uh, is that the three years survival rate for patients with type 1 HCC uh, after RFA was 94.7%. And uh, according to uh, literature, the three years survival rate after partial hectorectomy was 73.4%. So, what they uh, said is that, uh, what they concluded is that type 1 HCCs on creative imaging are optimal candidates for RFA because they are less aggressive lesions, they require uh, less aggressive treatment with. Uh, and uh, they could be easily tackled by RFA. But for lesions uh, uh, type 2 and type 3, the 3 years survival rates were 72% and 33%. They are very less compared to uh, partial hepatectomy, that is 73.4%. Uh, and for lesions that are irregularly shaped, that is type 2 and type 3, uh, the authors concluded that they were best treated by surgical resection. And uh, uh, now there are studies actually uh, that said that Based on the preoperative imaging, uh, the ablation margin also, uh, uh, the uh, optimal uh, uh, ablation margin also differs. And this was one study published in 2015, uh, which investigated the influence of resection margin on early recurrence with respect to gross hematite and uh, um, on preoperative imaging and expression of cytokeratin 19. And uh, they divide the uh, uh, patients into two groups. One is uh, group one is expanding and waiting node blood times, that is type one and type two, according to the Korean and Japanese classification. And group two, that is uh, uh, that included no with retinoid extension, multinodal confluent, and the inferior types of lesions. And uh, after the post uh, ablation, uh, they divide the resection margin into narrow, that is less than one centimeter uh, uh, from 0.1 to 0.9, or wide, that is greater than or equal to one centimeter. And in this, uh, and on analysis, what they found was that the group two lesions, uh, that is the higher grade lesions, had higher prevalence of uh, gross protein invasion. Uh, microscopic uh, portal invasion, micro vessel invasion, satellite node use, interpreting metastasis, uh, multicentric occurrence, and positive from CK19. And uh, on uh, what they found was that 
in group one lesions, uh, uh, if uh, the uh, restriction margin is, uh, the ablation margin is, yes, just a second, uh, yeah. uh, restriction margin uh, is, uh, yeah, there was no difference in the uh, recurrence according to the restriction margin. In group two, uh, what they found was that a uh, higher recurrence rate was there in uh, lesions with a narrow resection margin that is less than one centimeter uh, where, uh, compared to uh, uh, and uh, compared to those with a wide resection margin. And patients in group two, uh, what they also found was that uh, the CK19 positivity showed a higher prevalence of microvascular invasion than those without CK19. And uh, at the imaging morphology, the significance of imaging morphology as a prognosis indicator has also been studied uh, uh, as, uh, as, 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 uh, uh, as a prognosis indicator after taste. And uh, this one study uh, that was published in 2019 with others studied the uh, outcome of uh, uh, transarticular embolization based on the pre-procedure uh, pre imaging, uh, uh, imaging morphology. And uh, they studied 405 patients retrospectively who underwent the taste series between 2008 and 2016. And uh, they divided the lesions into two types, nodular and non-nodular, nodular, nodular uh, in, including the type 1 and type 2, and uh, you know, 1 and 2 types, and uh, non-nodular uh, uh, having other uh, multi-nodular uh, concurrent lesions, uh, the uh, inferior lesions, and the nodular with perinodular extension types. And what they found was that uh, the tumor size, number, non-nodular type, alpha fetal level, AST levels, and in terms of performance status as independent predictors of survival. However, uh, non-nodular type was the most powerful factor that influences overall survival, time to progression, and radiological response rate. In conclusion, what they said was that the HCC uh, macroscopy appearance on imaging is a determinant predictor of outcome after CTs. And uh, we also have studies that uh, say that imaging morphology as, as, a, uh, as a, uh, a significant pro uh, prognostic indicator after liver resection. Uh, this one study, uh, this the study came in uh, 2013, um, and uh, uh, what what way, uh, what they studied was uh, uh, to find out uh, the predicted factors uh, or unexpected early cancer-related death within two years due to recurrence after curative hepatectomy for solitary small lesions without macroscopic vascular invasion. And what they found was that excessive blood loss during operation and histopathological findings of microvascular invasion. And poor differentiation are predictive factors of cancer-related death within two years of hepatitis for solitary uh, uh, small hepatocellular carcinomas. So, uh, what uh, uh, what uh, uh, all these uh, evidences, all these literature, what they tell is that gross appearance of HCCs can be recognized preoperatively by imaging studies. However, the challenge is that uh, right now uh, the all uh, the currently widely used uh, uh, staging system, say as UICC, BCLC, and AJCC. Classification still, uh, they just focus on multi multiplicity, size, and vascular and biotech invasion status of the SCCs without taking into consideration all the other prognostic factors, all the other variations and heterogeneity uh, associated with hepatocellular carcinomas. Next, uh, the uh, other uh, 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 prognostic factor, uh, other uh, markers that help us differentiate uh, between the various uh, subtypes of hepatocellular carcinoma are the tumor markers. Uh, as uh, There are multiple studies actually that uh, show that uh, uh, tumor markers uh, have, uh, uh, they can help us predict microvascular invasion. And uh, this was one study that was published in 2020 uh, by uh, Professor Koizumi and his colleagues. Now what uh, they have, they conducted a retrospective study of 292 patients between 2004 and 2014. What they found was that serum AFE concentration and log of uh, AFE gradient appear to be clinically useful in predicting muscular, microvascular invasion in patients with hepatocellular carcinoma. And uh, the cutoff values they, they use was 33 uh, nanogram and uh, 0.76 respectively. And what they found was that uh, uh, by using these uh, cutoff values, they could predict the presence and absence of microvascular invasion by more than or equal to 60% accuracy. Uh, next, uh, 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 there are multiple, uh, the most commonly used human markers are AFP and PIVCA2. And uh, what the studies also show us is that uh, the combination of AFP and PIVCA2 has a higher sensitivity, specificity, positive and negative predictive value uh, compared to either of the markers alone. 
this was one study that was published in uh, 2015. Uh, what they found was that uh, a combination of alpha alpha fetoprotein and bupa2 had a, a better sensitivity, sensitivity, positivity value, and negativity value compared to either lesions alone. Uh, based on uh, uh, to differentiate uh, the lesions HCC from uh, 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 to uh, differentiate HCCs from uh, uh, in, uh, even in early and uh, overall uh, HCC uh, group. And this helped to even in uh, cases of early HCC, early stage HCC. And uh, what they also found was that uh, the higher level of uh, uh, PPR2 was associated with uh, higher tumor size, uh, multi uh, multi uh, multiplicity of the lesions, uh, lymphatic metastasis, tumor differentiation, and uh, portomain tumor thrombus. Uh, so, and uh, what they uh, found was that PIPCA2 was the only serum biomarker that could independently predict the increased risk of portomain tumor thrombus. And uh, this is uh, another study uh, that actually validated uh, the, uh, that uh, they found that uh, PIPCA level, uh, PIPCA2 level of more than 90 was an independent predictor of microvascular invasion. And uh, it was more efficient than alpha fetoprotein for early HCC. In, uh, based on uh, the available literature, actually, uh, how we change our uh, practice uh, is uh, for lesions uh, uh, that, uh, are small, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, have a morphological criteria, morphological appearance of a, a aggressive lesion that included uh, uh, the nodular with perinodular infiltrate uh, extension type or the uh, multinodular confluent type or inferior lesions. And uh, lesions that had high AFP and PIP2 uh, levels, uh, we uh, didn't uh, we uh, always preferred these patients to go for surgery? Uh, but if uh, the patients are not surgical candidates or patient didn't prefer surgery, uh, then uh, we uh, rather than taking them directly for ablation, we took these lesions uh, uh, for combination therapy in which uh, the patients were uh, first subjected to uh, 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 transarterial chemo embolization or transarterial embolization, and only then we took them for ablation. And uh, in uh, the, we are conducting a study actually uh, in which we are retrospectively analyzing the data. In this uh, study, uh, the inclusion criteria was uh, is a single lesion less than equal to three centimeter, uh, excluding uh, recurrent lesions, uh, a child shadows of A or B, uh, the morphology the uh, to be included. Uh, uh, the, the we are only including the inferior drive CC uh, in this uh, study and with. Uh, or uh, uh, lesions having a few level of uh, more than 100 or people call a two level of more than 100. And with uh, uh, any lesion with exerbatic disease excluded and no recurrent lesions have been included. And uh, what uh, the cutoff value that we use is, we have uh, taken the cutoff value used in, uh, uh, well, that was suggested by this study in which uh, alpha beta brain level and uh, people call two level of more than 100. Uh, were uh, found to be independent predictive factors for pathological vascular invasion. In our setup, what we have to uh, 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 understand is that uh, uh, in, in India, actually, we still deal with a lot of patients who uh, don't have insurance. They have to pay from their own pockets. So uh, we also had to uh, find, uh, find, uh, find out if uh, the combination therapy was actually cost-effective. So uh, as an initial uh, uh, study, we only in, uh, uh, included lesions with... Uh, uh, the higher uh, cutoff value of uh, 100 uh, for AFP and PIPA. And also we included only the lesions, uh, uh, the, the infiltrated lesions that had the worst prognosis of them all. And the uh, HCC diagnosis was uh, done by ESL criteria, uh, uh, based, uh, which was based on CCT or CMRI. In CLD patients, uh, uh, in uh, CLD patients, uh, its uh, diagnosis was for imaging and only biopsy was taken if it was equivocal. And in non CLD patients, patients were selected, uh, uh, were uh, taken for treatment only after biopsy confirmation. And uh, the total number of patients, uh, we actually uh, deal with a lot of HCC patients, but uh, the patients who are meeting these criteria uh, were around seven. We just started uh, this, uh, uh, the, this protocol uh, around uh, one and a half, two years back. And uh, uh, the mean age of the patients was 67 years, the mean AFP level was 279. Uh, varying from 4.5 uh, uh, in the range between 4.5 to 1,000. The mean lesion size was 2.4. Uh, the child status, all the patients uh, were uh, child A. The mean follow-up was uh, 8.1 uh, months. Uh, the tumor morphology, if you compare that, 17% uh, um, of the lesions were having infiltrative morphology. 
fourteen percent had uh, vaguely nodular. Uh, um, there is one person had vaguely nodular type, and one lesion had uh, nodular with pre-nodular extension. In uh, all these, uh, in uh, all the seven lesions that we uh, uh, we we were evaluating, um, there was not a, a single recurrence till date, and the mean uh, uh, follow-up uh, uh, is uh, around uh, seven months, which ranging from one to uh, the largest follow-up is for twenty-four months. And the mean AFP level on follow-up uh, has uh, reduced drastically uh, to 13.4. And uh, what we know is that uh, improved, there is a, a taste plus microwave ablation uh, gives better results than taste alone. Uh, uh, there are multiple case uh, reports regarding that. Uh, but uh, in, and, uh, this was, uh, in, in, uh, we actually started uh, uh, the uh, treatment protocol. Uh, based on uh, based on our some based on our understanding of the literature that uh, rather uh, aggressive lesions uh, just like anywhere else in the body need aggressive treatment and uh, we need to have better uh, tumor control we need to have better ablation margins and uh, we always achieve better ablation margin when we combine the two modalities together rather than using the uh, single modality uh, and uh, uh, in our protocol, uh, what we do is that if a patient is style A, uh, the uh, taste, uh, the transarty embolization and microwave ablation are done on adjacent days. If the lesion uh, patient is on in child B, uh, then uh, we uh, stage uh, the treatment. Uh, we do a transarty uh, chemo uh, embolization or transarty embolization one month uh, prior, and microwave ablation is done after doing an MRI. Uh, one month later, even if the uh, follow-up MRI shows complete response. And uh, how uh, we select uh, uh, whether we do transartic immobilization or transartic embolization is, if uh, the lesion is uh, early child B, we uh, proceed with transartic immobilization. Otherwise, uh, we uh, go with transartic embolization. If uh, the lesions are, uh, if the two treatment uh, modal uh, uh, modalities are done on adjacent days, we always go for transartic embolization rather than transarterial Chemoembolization. <clears throat> so, uh, just uh, showing you uh, the case reports, uh, 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 what uh, uh, a few case reports uh, that we did uh, based on this uh, uh, protocol. Uh, this uh, case one, uh, 57 year old female with CLD diagnosed five years back on regular surveillance. Uh, it was a natural cirrhosis, child A, direct to have hypoechoic nodule in segment 4B. CCD done shows a uh, uh, 3 cm infiltrated nodal lesion. It was a single node uh, type with well-defined margins, uh, uh, morphological uh, type 1 HCC. Uh, Lyrides uh, score was 5 and uh, AFP was 181. So uh, in this case, uh, what we did is this, you can see uh, uh, enhancing node dilution uh, with, uh, uh, you can, uh, yes, enhancing uh, lesion in segment 4B, uh, showing enhancement washout. And uh, we did uh, taste for this lesion. Conventional taste was done in doxorubicin. And uh, on uh, 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 one month follow up MRI was taken. I uh, showed partial response. You can see the enhancing uh, areas in the uh, posterior aspect of the lesion. And here uh, the patient was taken for, uh, and you can see a uh, uh, diffusion restriction here. Uh, and uh, the corresponding DWA image is not provided. But you can see a uh, loss of uh, signal here. And uh, patient was taken for microwave ablation uh, after one month uh, with uh, the uh, the uh, antenna pointing towards ball bladder and stomach. And uh, patient, uh, we had given artificial ascites for this patient. And uh, what uh, we found was that this is uh, in the last follow up uh, six, uh, at six months, and the AFE level has come down to 7.4. And this case two, uh, it's a 68-year-old uh, male, alcohol-related CLD, child A. On regular follow-up, ready to have uh, raised AFP, that is 105. CCD showed a 1.9 centimeter type 2 HCC in segment 8 bar 4A in subdiaphragmatic location. Uh, and this is the lesion. Uh, this uh, post is appearance of the lesion. And uh, on the uh, next day itself, we took the patient for ablation. You can see uh, we, uh, uh, in the... Uh, post days, uh, the ablation margins tend to be larger in size because of the uh, 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 ischemic edema. And uh, uh, for this reason also, uh, arterial ascites was made. And this is uh, uh, one month follow MRI. The AFP has come down to uh, uh, 4.6 after the procedure with no resolution and good ablation margins. 
Now, case three, uh, six-year-old male on evaluation for abdominal discomfort due to a CLD, child lean, uh, patient at release AFP, that of uh, 257. CCT showed uh, no obvious lesion, and uh, the patient was taken by MRI with contrast, which showed a 2.1 centimeter lesion in segment seven. And uh, you can see the lesion here. The lesion was subverting the posterior margin of the right hepatic vein, and uh, it was wedged between, uh, it was uh, in a very close relation with the IVC also. And uh, uh, this lesion, uh, we took patient first for taste. Uh, you can see the dense liberal deposition. And unfortunately, this is a time when uh, COVID stuck and uh, the patient had uh, abdominal pain and uh, the patient had, uh, uh, didn't want the uh, want to undergo uh, microablation the next day. Uh, so uh, we uh, had to resource the patient after a few days. And uh, uh, then uh, due to uh, COVID issues, uh, all the elective procedures were postponed and uh, this patient underwent a uh, microwave ablation after three months, uh, which was really due to the COVID wave. And uh, this is the follow-up uh, done after 16 months. The AFE level is now 2.2. Uh, this is case for a 70-year-old male alcohol-related CLD on follow-up. Uh, USC has showed a suspicious lesion in right lobe, subdiaphragmatic region. CCD showed a 2.6 and infantry lesion in segment 7. Child day and uh, AFE was only 4.5. And uh, you can see the lesion, uh, ill-defined lesion uh, with uh, heterogeneous uh, pattern, uh, enhancement pattern. And uh, uh, this patient also was taken for uh, uh, for uh, taste first. And on the same sitting next day, we took the patient for ablation. And this is a, a six month follow up where we feel uh, is 4.7. There is no recurrence of new lesion. This case five, a 65 year old male, alcohol related CLD, child day on follow up, found to have raised AFP 220. On CCD, uh, the, uh, the lesion showed a moderately slightly enhancing infrared vibration in subdiaphragmatic location of segment two. You can see the lesion here in segment two, exophytic uh, in subdiaphragmatic location, showing a capsule like enhancement here in delayed phase. And uh, uh, you can see ill defined margins uh, with the uh, uh, raised, uh, 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 the, the lesion subverting the uh, diaphragm. And uh, this stage patient was taken for taste, uh, and uh, this is the post taste image uh, showing dense liberal deposition. Uh, and then uh, the next day, the patient was taken for ablation. And uh, three months later, uh, there is uh, no uh, resolution. Uh, and, uh, uh, and yeah, no resolution. And AFE has come down to 3.4. Uh, the last uh, case that I am showing is uh, a centurial male, naturally CLD, child date. If you have high AFP in follow-up, uh, the 184 uh, level, nanogram per ml. And CCD showed a 3 centimeter inferior type HCC peripheral transplantation difference and uh, enhancement pattern. Uh, the lesion showed moderate side enhancement pattern, and PET CD was also done for him, uh, and PET, uh, it was a PET David lesion. Uh, the uh, PET CT was uh, taken uh, to, uh, uh, to rule out any exapatic disease spread because the patient had back pain and uh, the PET CT showed no other uh, lesions on uh, uh, no other lesions. And you can see the lesion here uh, on arterial phase, uh, heterogeneous enhancement with transient hepatic adhesion defense and uh, showing uh, washout on delayed phase and uh, having infiltrative pattern. And this lesion also was taken for uh, uh, taste uh, in the first sitting and uh, underwent uh, 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 ablation after one month. And follow-up uh, available is, uh, this is a, a lesion a case with our longest follow-up of 24 months. And the AFP level at present is 1.5. There was no case-related mortality in any of our cases. And uh, uh, according to literature also, and according to, our, uh, according to what we have seen is that uh, uh, the major complication rate in spite of combination therapy is, uh, uh, is uh, even though higher than uh, 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 the complications associated with uh, individual uh, microwave ablation or taste, but however, this still is not uh, significant enough, uh, not not uh, not significant at not significant levels. Uh, so uh, what I uh, reiterate is that uh, HCCs are not a homogeneous population; they are a heterogeneous population, and they require uh, tailor-based treatment according to multiple criteria, not just based on size and number. And uh, uh, with the increasing evidence that is coming through, uh, based on morphology, based on based on immunohisto, uh, uh, immuno, uh, uh, histo chemical markers, and uh, uh, other tumor markers, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, all the guidelines in the future will incorporate uh, all these uh, criteria uh, for tailor-based treatment.
or individual HCCs. Thank you so much.